Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters. It is Brother Solis again with another episode of Coffee in the Truth. And I got my twin brothers from Twin Mothers in the studio today with me. Tanner and Elliot introduce the audience. Hello, audience. Oh, Hello. I said introduce uh, introduce yourselves to the audience. Sorry. Oh, Hello, audience. <laughs> it's Tanner. Hello. All right, my listeners, we have actually been getting into some pretty good topics. And I know as a whole, I we think we had talked, did one of, when I, I think we actually did one on insecurities. But whenever you use the word insecurity, I know I tend to look at it as one thing. But insecurity has different branches, I guess you can say. It's like a tree, but it got different branches or different fruits, I would say. And one of those fruits we want to talk about today, and that is, what is it, Brother Tanner? Come on. Timidity. Timidity. Now, do you believe timidity is something that people in your age group, is, is that's like a problem, or that's like, oh, no, you only deal with that when you're in your 40s, or when you're a dad, or... Yeah, I think it. I think it hits you in your teens, because it. Yeah, like you said, it. It stems from insecurity. So, and insecurity just warms in high school and middle school and stuff like that. So, it definitely rises up in teens. And what about you, Elliot? Do you think that's the a, a issue? Yeah, I think it. Like Tanner said, I think it rises from teenager, and if you don't deal with it, I mean, I'm I'm still a teen or um still at a young age, but my thoughts, if you don't deal with it, it rises up into your older age. I, I don't know, but it's what I think. And I, I believe you're right. I mean, uh, of course, what you deal with as a teenager, if you don't overcome that or defeat that or find out how to defeat it, because like I said, I know we tend to, as Christians, you know, we may be like, oh, you know, you slay Goli- uh, Goliath. Oh, you got to cut off its head and he'll never rise again. I get that. But I don't get that. The reason why I say I don't get that is just because you overcome something doesn't mean that it will not try to rise up again, regardless of how many times you cut off his head. Now, I heard multiple people talk about, oh, well, you know, you're going to deal with something. You're not exempt. You're not dead yet. We're not in heaven yet. Don't think that just because you kill a devil one time that he doesn't got 10 more homeboys that want your soul too. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to deal with it. And so if that's why I said if you don't find out as a teenager how to deal with pride or how to deal with anger, how to deal with frustration, how to be able to deal with timidity, it's going to it's going to go into your adulthood. And why do you think when traumatic things happen what do people what do they go, you know, they go back to that individual's childhood, right? They go back to how they were in school. What led to this traumatic event? It wasn't like one day this person and you will see that they either had something wrong in their childhood or something in their teenage years. So uh, I, I I get very much what y'all saying. I always like to ask the question, why? Why do you believe that this is an issue? Or why do you believe it's a struggle if it's not an issue? Let's just say, why am I dealing with this? Why is timidity attacking me or why is it coming at me or why does it keep popping up? Can you help me? Um, that's a great question to think about. I don't know why it attacks people, but some of it, I don't know. It's just the spirit of fear because the spirit of fear is one of the biggest devices from the devil. And, you know, timidity is like under that, like, like spirit of fear is like up here and Timidity, like it's like a umbrella. So I think that whenever the spirit of fear is introduced, it just branches off. Another question you just asked was, why why is it a problem? Well, it's a problem because it blocks God from using you because of I mean, there's there's different kinds of timid timidness, but let's say you're timid to speak in front of other people about God. Okay. And so it block so because of your timidness, it blocks you from reaching them, and then so it blocks you from God, or it, you know what I mean. 
Yeah, I know what he said. So, again, remember, insecurity is the tree. Mm-hmm. And the word you use, fear, as, as, as a fruit. I told these guys, the listeners, and um, my brothers and my sisters, that I like <laughs> to call y'all, we need to do a podcast on the faces of insecurity because insecurity, like I said, is the tree and you got different fruits. Fear is one of those fruits. And you're going to see in your life that you're going to deal with timidity is going to be along with fear is going to be along with pride and all these in the end, they come down to insecurity and there's more. I don't, you know, want to ruin it all. So that's a little bit of something I'll give y'all down the road. But one of the most famous scriptures is second Timothy one and seven. And what does it read? Come on, come on. Off the top of your brain. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you all the KJV version, all right? Be- the reason is because we often pass it up because of the KJV version, the way it's worded. But if you look at this word fear in this, this is only mentioned one time in the whole Bible. This type of fear is only mentioned one time, and it's in this verse. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Now, the NLT version, I love what it says. Y'all, like I said, y'all know, y'all know me. I read the NLT. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. That word right there translating timidity. Remember, I just told y'all about the tree. They're gonna end, they're gonna run, run into each other. Now he's telling Timothy this. It's kind of, it, it's really powerful when you read that first chapter of Second Timothy because now he's talking to Timothy about his grandmother's faith, about his mother's faith, and now he starts encouraging him in his faith, and then he encourages him with this verse. So it's like I don't know. I wasn't. I'm not Timothy, so I can't tell you. But I guess Paul understood there's going to be some things that you're going to do for God that if you're timid, it's going to slow you down and it's not it's going to destroy you. But I just want to remind you, young man, or as he's seen him as a son, I want to remind you, son, that God has not given us the spirit of timidity. Remember, he will go on and tell Timothy, don't let your youth despise you. Don't let your age despise you. Don't let that be the reason why you can't speak, you know, with power and authority and the Holy Ghost to people. So the, the reason I'm saying a why, um, I guess the thing about teenagers is we got to get in where we fit in. So do you believe that timidity is something that you're going to deal with because you're more worried about trying to fit in with a certain group or trying to get accepted by a certain group? Yeah, because like you said, everything roots from insecurity or everything sprouts from insecurity so yeah i think it's something that pops up what do you do you have an opinion on that elliot or i mean yeah i I think you can from because now your prideful person will probably not tell you that they're timid and they're right but again pride is a form of insecurity so they're on the they're on the same tree. That might be on opposite sides of the tree, but they're still on the same tree, and they're still going to produce the same thing when you eat them. Is going to be insecurity. Why? Because I'm so caught up in other people's opinions about me. That's what pride is. Because why? Think about it. When you're pride, you want to be the best. And how are you the best if you don't tell yourself that? You want other people to tell you that, right? And you want to walk in the room and you want to be the biggest and baddest and you want people to think that about you. You know what I'm saying? Insecurity. The reason I call that insecurity because, baby, I ain't got to worry about it. I mean, I don't got people don't got to tell me. I already know who I am. You know what I'm saying? And your opinion about me, whoop de doo You know, you ain't going to be the one judging me on judgment day. <laughs> you know what I mean? So timidity. Now, I was uh, looking up the definition I guess, of timidity, and let me get it right quick. Here it goes. Lack of courage or confidence. 
Now, I know y'all got two different backgrounds, two different walks of life. But for a young person, I, I'm, I guess I'm speaking for a young person, all right? What is the number one thing that you think stops you from having confidence in God? Lack of trust or lack of, yeah, lack of faith and being scared, fearful. Can you ask that again, please? What is the number one thing that stops you from your confidence in God? There's no other words than what Tanner said. Lack of faith, trust. Okay, so I'm not I'm not just, you know, being a, a mean guy here, but it's easy for me to say, oh, lack of faith. Expound on that. What do you mean by lack of faith? Because when I think about faith, I mean, I can talk about, oh, God's going to bless me. I believe he's going to pay my bills. I believe he's going to heal my baby. See, two different things there, right? Lack of faith, like him not walking with you. You get scared. You get fearful that he's not walking with you, so you're just, you're timid. So what is causing it? Um, a lack of trust with God. Or... But I'm... I'm Remember, you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. So what is causing you to lack this confidence and trust in God? Do you believe it's because maybe I don't pray, maybe I don't oh, yeah. read, maybe I don't fast? You know, trying to help me. Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here, and I want to find out because I know there's an issue, but I want to know where it's coming from. Yeah. Like my sink, the other day it was clogged. And we try to plunge it. We try to put drain on me. My wife says my landlord had to come out here in the back and dig a hole somewhere that I would have never thought of. And that's where the problem was. Well, sorry, the source of the problem was over there. I knew the problem was a sink, you know, being clogged, but I didn't know where it was. So I know this timidity and this lack of faith and this lack of trust is there. But what is the source that is making that? Your thoughts. Okay, I like that. Like what I said earlier, speaking in front of people, like crowd of people, it's your thoughts that that open up to timidity. Mm -hmm. At least that's with me. No, I, that's I, what I think. No, I, I see what you're saying because yeah. you remember, you are what you eat. So yeah. if I tell myself, so thoughts and and it's crazy that you mentioned this, but it well not crazy, but it's it's right that you mentioned this. Because you are what you tell yourself. What, what does the Bible say? So what a man thinking in his heart, that's what he is. So is it overthinking? Do you, would you say overthinking leads to timidity or goes as a helping hand in timidity? Overthinking. Because that's what you're doing, right? Whenever you, yeah. you got to speak in front of people, the first thing yeah. you think is, oh, man, everybody's going to watch it. Am I zipper down? Does my breath stink? Like, bro, you in here, they're like, 20 foot away from you. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. never good. It's never, you know what, God, there's somebody in this room that needs to hear something from you. Thank you for choosing me. With confidence, I believe that you're going to go for it because these are your people. You know what I'm saying? We don't think that, right? We always think the bad. Oh, I'm going to get choked up. Oh, what about I accidentally say a word wrong? Or what about I accidentally say the scripture wrong? Or what about I say the wrong scripture? Or what about I accidentally send the sound lady the wrong scripture and I'm, I'm sitting here trying to scramble looking for it, right? This is what we, so mm -hmm. that is a whole lot of overthinking. So it would go hand in hand. So I guess, what would you tell me then? A, if I told you that I was dealing with timidity, do you think that that would be an answer to tell somebody, you know, quit being over uh, overthinker? Yeah. Um, the other day I was reading Exodus four and 10 through 12. It's when Moses, when Moses is pleading with the Lord and I'm going to read it to y'all in OT. But Moses pleaded with the Lord. Oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I've never been and now, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue tied and get my words tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or not to speak, right. hear or not to hear, see or not to see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will be with you as you speak and instruct you in what you say. I just want, I wanted to add that in there. <laughs> no, that's, that's great because what can you learn from that? 
that God is, God will, God will help you. I don't remember, I, well, this was a couple of weeks, so I don't remember exact date. Like I said, these are my young people, so I preach to them every Wednesday, whether they want to hear it or not. <laughs> but yes, I talk to them every Wednesday. And one of the things that I told them was, we act like God does not know our struggles, mm -hmm. our defects, I guess we can say, right? Our glitches, our lagging. And so when God calls us, that's the first thing we want to mention to him. Like he's just up there guessing, like he's like any mini mighty mowing, and then he lands on me, and I'm the most insecure wreck in the room, and he does not know that. It's 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 kind of crazy how in that in that story or that testimony in the Bible there that he says, "All right, I I know you got a brother Aaron, right? He even chose I'll use Aaron, but I want you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We'll allow Aaron to tag along, but it's you." And here he goes, right, showing him his, his, his insecurities, like, if God didn't know. And what is God's response to that? He said, oh, you know what, you're right, you know what, give me seven days. I know I made the earth in one day, but I, I'm, it's going to have to at least take me seven days to figure out what I can do to help you. I was like, oh, look, go. <laughs> I'll be your mouthpiece. I'll be your hands. I'll be your feet. I just need you to move. You go, so what did he do? What, what, when you see that story, what do you tell yourself? What did Moses do? He doubted himself. Or he doubted God. Well, he doubted God. Sorry, you're right. I just told you wrong. How did Moses address his problem? Come on, we live in a day and age where we want to put our problems on Snapchat. We want to put our problems on Instagram. We want to put our problems on Facebook. But where did Moses take his problem to? Oh, to God. And what did he get after he had this encounter with God? A reassurance. He didn't have assurance. So he couldn't get reassured because he wasn't assured. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not knocking you. I mean, we're talking here. Nobody's. Yeah. You know, I'm just helping you to, to understand. He got that famous word I was talking about last time, that Godfidence. Oh, yeah. He finally started realizing you're right, God. I'm trying to make my abilities your abilities. You are not man. You are not man. I mean, he's looking at a bush that is not consumed, but it's on fire. It's not even consuming. What do you tell yourself that? I mean, really, if you were to see that, it's not consuming and you're speaking through it. But I'm going to doubt you. I don't doubt that you, you, you can catch a bush on fire and it not burn. But it's on fire, but it's not burning. That just sounds impossible, right? Mm -hmm. So you helping my speech or giving me confidence in my speech See, sometimes God don't want to take away your defect. God wants to be glorified through your defect. He's preaching now. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. We want God to deliver us from this, and we want God to deliver us from that. And I'm going to be real with y'all. Tanner, as we know Tanner here, he, he's not as, as, I guess, has a man voice. You know? Let's be real here. Yeah. So you can kind of be hitting on yourself about timidity. Oh, I don't speak like a man. We know his background. He used to be a uh, homosexual, thought he was. All right. So you look at that and you're all like, oh, God, I want to take it away. What about God sitting there saying, you know what, Tanner, I don't want to take that away because there's somebody that's going to hear your voice that dealing with that same dirty devil that you did. And I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them that I can change them, too. Yep. You never thought about that, have you? Not until just now. I was thinking about the other day. I was all like, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm too worried about changing this young man when there's somebody else that needs to stop and says, hey, I hear in your speech that you talk like this and this. Were you, did you used to be this and this or are you this and this? Mm -hmm. Buddy, that is an open door. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That is not a closed door. That is not something that I, I, God delivered. What about he wants to use that? Mm -hmm. You ever thought we don't think about that though, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're too busy trying to line up to other people. 
well, such and such don't talk like this, and such and such don't have this problem. What about God wants to use your defect? What about God don't take away your crippled leg? But what about he wants to glorify, be glorified through your crippled leg? So somebody with two legs can understand, man, I, I'm having struggles believing and trusting and walking with God. And here this guy is crippled and he's giving God everything. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 there's something that Lecrae said that was really cool. He said, watch a broken man tell you that healing happens. Think about that. You got this crippled man here telling you that God can use you or God can do it for you and you can trust God. And then you're looking at you and you ask yourself, what's the excuse? But there was one point in time, this man had to get the confidence in his defect that God can use. Because we all have them. Like I said, I come, I come from the projects. You know, I, I, I deal with the same devils that come from the projects. You know, the trapping and the rapping and the, you know, do, doing all the nonsense, you know, jail and hell, you know, on a, on a, a silver platter and it's all uh, dished out to you and you can get some if you want some, but Jesus, we don't do that, you know, but I, those are a lot of things that I had. Those are a lot of defects that I had. And in my defects, I can honestly say that God has been good to me. I got a, I got a um, message from a buddy of mine the other day and he told me, man, you're the, what is it? How do you say? Ep epitome or, 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 a pit. A pit or whatever of getting it out the mud. And he's all like, man, I hope God's blessing you like he's blessing me. And then he goes on to thank me for the encouragement and the things that I have told him. But no, I'm not. But I will tell you that I try my best to get my defects and give them to God and allow God to be glorified through my defects. Mm -hmm. Timidity was one of my defects. I, you know, I ain't lying to nobody whenever I say that. Why? Because you're, you're, you're very timid. I mean, here I was a prideful individual, and then now I'm, I'm a minister of the gospel. And so you want to reach back and say, well, you know, well, at least I can call daddy. I couldn't call daddy, Tanner. You know, daddy was dead. And, you know, I really couldn't call mama. And so here I was trying to figure this out on my own. But at the same time, trying to make it seem like I'm a great individual or I got it all together in front of my wife and my kids. Like, you know, I can carry this. I can do this. But in the inside, I really, I really couldn't because I didn't want them to know. And so timidity, it does have a different kinds of mask. It's kind of crazy because you will do that. You will try to wear the, the mask of pride, but you're timid inside. And you try to act like you're something you're not so people won't recognize it. We're, re we're really great at wearing masks. We love wearing masks. I'm not, not talking about the one that's supposed to block COVID. or nothing. I'm, No, I'm talking about spiritual masks. We wear them all the time. And timidity is not something that we're going to wear. It's, so, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be behind the mask. So is there a, is there something that, that you want to add? Any of y'all want to add to this? Um. Yeah, actually. Can we talk about the different... I know we've talked about where timidity stems from and, you know, how it's like on the same tree, tree of insecurity. But can we talk about the different types of timidity? Like Brother Elliot said, timidity in witnessing or timidity in worshiping or timidity in prayer. Can we discuss those for a while? Um. Okay, so we're talking about different areas of timidity. Yeah. As a young Christian, um, hmm. So we have timidity against our enemies. You know, the first thing I can look at is, of course, King Saul and the whole army of Israel shaking in their boots. And then a young shepherd boy. He might have not been young. I don't really know. I'm just a young shepherd boy. I'm really trying to help somebody who feels like just because they're a nobody, they can't be used. That's what I'm really trying to do here. A nobody steps on the scene. He was not in the army. He was not chosen to be in the army. He was chosen to take care of daddy's sheep. Would step on the scene. 
But for some reason, we have the somebody who does not know who they are, and we have the nobody who knows who their God is. So he would step on the scene and he would defeat his enemy or their enemy because it wasn't even his enemy if you really look at it because he's all like, hold on, who are you to defile the armies of the living God? He didn't say, who are you to defile the armies of Saul? He said, the armies of the living God. I said, uh, look, you ain't finna be uncircumcised, you dirty rat, and you ain't gonna come over here and just come take God's cheese. You know, what I mean? you know? That's, that's what he said. You know, paraphrasing, okay, but I'm just saying here. He didn't make it about Saul. He didn't make it about David. He didn't make it about Jesse, his dad. He made it about God. So overcoming your enemy. Now, of course, we're, we're Christian here, so we know the number one enemy, the dirty devil, okay? But what about the enemies that you are facing today, whether it's trying to fit in, trying to be accepted, whether it's regrets, whatever your enemy is that you're fighting day to day, you need to start making it about God and quit making it about yourself. You get what I'm saying there? Yep. And that's what David did. And what do you, why do you think he came out victorious? Because he didn't sit there and say, who are you to defile David, the servant of Saul? Or who are you to defile Saul? He said, who are you? You're uncircumcised, dude. You ain't even on our level. But it took a nobody finding out who the real somebody was. Why it took a somebody who was king that didn't even understand anything. He felt like a nobody. You get what I'm saying? So he's hiding behind a mask here of, of a crown of a king. Why David... Is hiding with the Lord. And I'm not talking about they're hiding out. I'm saying he's encamping with the Lord. He's trusting in the Lord. He's hearing from the Lord. And then we find out something incredible by a person that we can say was timid. You know, and I, I use that word very loosely. We can try to say he was timid, but he wasn't. Why? Because he didn't rush on the scene, right? Whenever he was getting chose to be the next king, everybody got picked but him. I mean, his daddy even forgot about him, bro. I mean, for real. He said, call your sons. And then he has this, the prophet has to say, hey, is there an, any, is this all of them? I mean, even daddy passed him up. You don't think that would come with some timidity? The lack of confidence. I mean, think about it. When your own daddy passes you up, you think that you're going to walk around the boat and courageous young man. But why daddy was passing him up, you know who didn't pass him up? God, because it was in this same story that we will find out that he will kill a bear and a lion with his own hands. And why did he do that again? Because he said the Lord delivered them into my hands. The Lord is going to deliver your strength into your hands when you quit making it about you and start making it about him. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, your defects quit making it about you and start making it about him. How can you be glorified in this? You know, if this can't be taken away, how can you be glorified in this? So, one, your enemy. And uh, next, uh, next thing I would say is, of course, it has to be your background. Like I said, me coming from the projects, Peter being a fisherman, uh, Paul persecuting the church. All these things going to come with some confidence. I mean, some, uh, some enemies, some setbacks. If you allow them to. And so you can be very timid because you can go back on who you used to be. And how can I be used by God if I persecuted the church? How can I be used of God if I denied him? How can I be used of God if I come from the projects and don't even have a background in ministry? How can I be used of God? And so you have this timidness that comes about you because now you're not confident because you don't know where it comes from. But... The best I try to learn from these individuals is, yeah, failures will come, but you can rise above them. And so the only way to really get ahead and get a one-up on timidity is getting out there and jumping in the water. You know, you can play in the kiddie pool all day, or you can come jump out here in this 12-foot deep, you know what I mean, and get your whole body in there. But that's the way you're going to learn. My, my boss... I'm privileged to 
have a boss like I do, and he tells me, Jonathan, there's only one way to ride a horse. I said, how's that? He said, jump on and ride it. And that's the only way to ride a horse. Same thing. That's the only way you're going to overcome is do it. Because what are you doing when you don't? What you tell me? Overthinking. Overthinking. And what is that getting you? Nothing. No, you, it's getting you somewhere. Guess where it's getting you? Set back. Think about it. All that overthinking is pushing you back and back and back and back and back. So you realize, man, I was at this mark and now I'm 10 miles behind because I, I continued I, over and over again to overthink. So you just do it. I know Nike has that saying, and I understand what they, well, for real, we just got to do it. We got to quit overthinking, and we have to do something. Same thing with this podcast. Me and Brother Elliot were talking about it till one day Elliot sat down, and I was all like, you know, in my head, I wanted a professional sound and the professional equipment and things of that nature, and Elliot just pops out his iPhone, and we're all like, let's do it. But see, there was a timidity, a timidness in there. Now, this is a, a, another level of, you know, you're not doing something because you feel everything has to be perfect. And that's very sign because, remember, it's a lack of, of, of confidence and courage. So you're not confident that so you can accomplish something because you have to be perfect. No, you have to be willing. Come on. Don't we read that again? I know I'm, I'm aware of this thing out, but let's read that again. Jesus will tell Peter, you're going to deny me. Jesus, Peter's all like, no, nah, you know, Lord, I'll die, I'll die for you. And he said, man, well, you're going to deny me. <laughs> you know, and Peter's all like, uh, uh, no, no, no. And he denies him. So God knew that he was going to deny him before he, it, it, before he even knew. <laughs> so God is gonna, knows that we're going to fail in life somewhere. We just have to be willing. And the closer we get to Jesus, just like Peter, the closer he was getting to Jesus, the closer that that fisherman lifestyle and habits and negative traits that he picked up along life would soon fade off the more closer he would get to Jesus and the more he got in relationship with Jesus. He didn't sit there and say, you know what, Lord, hold on. I need to get myself right. I need to quit cussing. I need to quit lying. I need to quit stealing. I need to quit whatever his he, he, the struggles that he had. He followed the Lord. And if you read and pay attention, because you got to pay attention, because when you read, you can miss it, but pay attention. How none of his old lifestyle habits affected him the more he was around Jesus. You can say, well, didn't he cuss when he denied Jesus? Yeah, he did, but he was away from the Lord, right? But whenever he was close to the Lord, he stayed with the Lord. He was able to accomplish a lot of things. Though he was not perfect, he was willing. And, I mean, do any of y'all see another a form of, I guess, uh, something we don't see in timidity? Like, I guess another angle, a different angle of timidity? If Tanner doesn't, then, I'll have, then I have a question. Go ahead. Do you have any experiences with timidity? And if you do, um, can you tell them? If if you don't want to, that's all right. Well, I'll be honest. I mean, my my goal on this podcast is to be transparent. If I hide something from y'all, I mean, I ain't no, you know, I, what's, this is in vain. Um, you can laugh at my scars. You can try to throw them in my face. But, baby, throw them in my face when God says, I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So, um, <laughs> every time I get behind the pulpit, there's some kind of timidity chasing me. There is, I mean, and I I learn to view it as a good thing because I'm nervous because I want God to be in this and I don't want to be in the way, you know. So, of course, I mean, people be all like, "Man, you preached," or you know, that was a great encouraging word, or when you opened up something. Oh, I'm a nervous wreck before I get up there. I am. And I can either allow the, the spirit of timidity to get me all choked up or I can sit there and say, you know what, God, 
this is what you called me to do, and this is what I'm going to do it. Just help me to say the words and let me be led. So that's probably one of the biggest right now off the back with that question. I really can't think of like a crazy, crazy. But I used to really, I did struggle with them um, because I'm a welder. I'm a welder. And I used to really struggle, brother Elliot, with the um, the fact of me getting a new job. And man, you know, what about, what about I can't, what about I'm not as good as I think I am or people say that I am. I couldn't really find that in myself because I was timid in where I was. I wasn't confident. Remember, timid is a lack of confidence. I was not confident in that. So I wasn't very up and going like when somebody told me, hey, there's a job over here that's paying X amount of dollars because I was still stuck in that, you know, and I had to learn that I had to be confident. I had to learn who my God was. And I had, I had to learn that he was the one that gave me this ability. He would teach me. He would show me. He could, He's the best teacher if you let him be. So on a personal, yeah, I can really honestly tell you that was one of the biggest things that I was I was timid about, applying myself. And apply yourself. You know, whatever it is, man, you're going to learn. But you got to start somewhere. Michael Jordan is, didn't dribble a ball and start, you know, had, with six rings. He had to start from learning how to do a layup, what angle to shoot, where to shoot, how much ump to give, how much ump not to give. He had to practice these things. Don't think that he just came off and oh, we get to see the end, right? That's what we love. We love looking at people's end story. But how many of successful people that you follow on, on Instagram do you look at their beginning? How many times do you find yourself looking at their beginning? Oh, I want to be like them. I want to have the car that they have. I want to have the house that they have. I want, you get what I'm saying? I want all this because you're looking at the end. But what did it take to get there? You know, what about the divorces that had to happen? Because that man was more worried about chasing his image and his family. Or what about the scars? What about the people that he had to cut off that were detrimental to him, but he cut them off because he was too worried about success? You know what I'm saying? It's very easy for me to look at, at, at the, the nice, pretty Photoshop picture than actually look at the beginning and what happened along that way. And, and same thing when we read the Bible. We get caught up reading Acts. We can look at, oh, man, look at their gifts, man. They're laying hands. People were getting healed. People were getting the Holy Ghost. Their shadows were healing people, man, man, man. But how do they get there? They had to let go of some timidity. You don't think that man was timid, Elliot? You don't think he was timid. Why do you think the Lord said, don't worry about what you're going to say? It's going to be me speaking through you anyway when the day comes. Why do you think he would say that? Because he had to, had to be dealing with some kind of overthinking, right? Man, what, what, what do you mean, Lord? They're going to they're gonna lock us up and we're, they're going to put us before the council. And Man, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Don't worry about it. I got you. But again, what are the word that I use? Willing. You have to be willing. And I wish I can give you like a really great, like, oh my goodness, you know, and it took me 80 days of fasting. I really, you know, but I can honestly write off the rip. I didn't know that you were going to give me that question. I would have prepared maybe better, dug in my life a little bit more. But right now off the the back, that's what I can really tell you in those areas of my life that I was, I dealt with timidity. And like I told you, I don't think I'm done, you know, that dirty devil don't sleep, but God don't either. So, any of any more questions from? I think I have another one. So back to your um, timidness on behind the pulpit. Have you ever been timid and then so scared? But when you get up there, you know God just helped like completely. It helps you. I mean, of course at. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna deal with it beforehand, and listen. That's the best thing I can tell you. Listen, and God's not gonna speak to you like we think. Of. Brother Elliot, this is the Lord. You know, and you've got this bright light shining on you that nobody can see, but it's you, and you're having this great moment and. This is what you're going to say. And you're like, oh, yeah, God. No. 
get off the Hollywood stuff, people. I love y'all enough. Quit watching that TV, man. God don't do that. But listen, he will tell you what to say. Like I told y'all Wednesday night, I was in my pity party, and the Lord told me, get out your pity party. And this is what you're going to say, and this is what you're going to do. And I said, okay, I had to get up and say, all right, you're all right. You're right. So whether it's a scripture, whether it's it's uh, something about love, something about faith, something about whatever it is, the Lord will, will give you the the word. And you just say, okay. And then you allow him to lead, and then you go in your life. And and you just start helping people and encouraging people because people are encouraged by your scars. I know you want to hide them because you don't want people to throw them in your face. Uh, people are going to throw anything in your face if you let them. You cannot be scared of your scars. Like I told you, throw them in my face when the Lord says, I don't know what you're talking about. You know why I said that? Because the Lord don't remember my failures. I'm forgiven. You get what I'm saying? You may try to throw them in my face, but in the end, he's not going to do it. So listen, listen, listen to the word that he gives you. Listen to the verse that he gives you and be led. Again, those who are led by the spirit shall be called the sons of God. So be led by his spirit. Don't be led by your flesh. That's Romans 8 and 8. And then you go to 8. I mean, not 8 and 8. That's in Romans chapter 8. But Romans chapter 8 starts off with, there's, therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Do not walk after your flesh. Your flesh is the one that is telling you that, oh, you're going to get choked up and you're going to get nervous and you can't do it. Overthinking. Overthinking. Yes. Your flesh is the one that's going to be overthinking, but the spirit is the one that's going to give you whatever to say and you just go with it. And you will feel it. You will know. You will know. And, and look. Will there be times that you feel you dropped the ball? Definitely. I share that with you, and I share that with you for a reason. I preached one time. The title of the message was uh, a King Me, and I got done. I told Brother Elliot, man, I felt like I dropped the watermelon. You know, I, 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 I felt like the worst message I ever preached. But I was sharing that with him so he knows that there would be time to come. But I didn't give up, did I? I preached another message that was, you know, pretty good in my eyes. I won't puff myself up, but other people, they, you know, they loved it. So you get what I'm saying? So you just don't give up just because you, you know, encounter some things, you know, but because I, I don't know what God's doing in, in, in behind the scene. You know, somebody walked up to me, I think that next Wednesday, and were like, man, that word really touched me. And I'm like, <laughs> I wish I felt the same, you know what I mean? <laughs> I felt like I dropped the ball. So just stay in your word. Don't think that you're going to be able to accomplish this thing without knowing God. Know God. How are you going to know God? He says, what? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the only way you're going to know him is through his word. And so his word, remember, uh, another thing Lecrae said, I guess he's on my mind today. He said, the reason that I sound the same, because the truth don't change. The truth's not going to change. So he will lead you. Yeah, he may tell you some different things, but I'm talk, talking about he's not going to change his word. He may try to, he, he may try, sorry. He will get that word and help you fit into modern terms is what I'm trying to say. But just allow, your, allow yourself, quit telling that dirty devil and keep giving him the power over your life. No, quit. Allow yourself to say, when you get in that moment, and you're getting so nervous that you're a nervous wreck and you can't say nothing, then stop. You're very much walking in the flesh. Stop and say, okay, God, be honest with him. Again, like Moses. Moses was honest about his defects, right? Be honest with your defects. Say, God, I'm overthinking right now. I'm nervous. I can't say this. Don't be scared to use that word, I can't, because I guarantee you God honors more truth than lie. Ooh, my goodness. So be truthful with him. If you feel like, hey, man, you're, you know, you can't, then tell him you can't, and then he'll, he'll show you how much he can. And remind yourself, you're right, God, I can't, but you can, and teach me. Show me. I love that when I pray, I try to pray that, God, for real. Teach me, oh, Lord, because there's no excuse for me to walk around and say, I don't know, or I can't get it together when I got the world's greatest teacher on my side. So, is, is there any more? No, no, No more for the... Thank you, Brother Solis. You know, we can we can sit down here and talk and we can talk 
to the people listening, but really, we're also talking to her, each other too. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that was that was a really great topic, timidness or timidity. Yeah, they definitely helped me. Yes, soaking, sitting back, soaking it all up. And look, guys, we're we're not here on this podcast because we're such great individuals that got this all figured out. Mm-mm. You know, we're very much on social media. Or, you know, if y'all want to reach out and say, hey, you know, have you ever dealt with this and this? And we, we try to be transparent. That's why I tell these guys, I'm not trying to hide nothing from y'all. What do I look like? That's not helping y'all. In fact, that is that is hurting y'all because now you feel you're going to believe the lie that nobody understands your pain. I want y'all to know there's people out there struggling and fighting, but we're going to overcome. we going to overcome. We, 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 we're a team. We're going to overcome this together. And so, you know, if y'all feel like y'all need to reach out or, you know, write us on Facebook or whatever the case is and, and you know, we talk, I mean, we're, we're, we're here. We want to try to make ourselves available. Like I said, we're, my wife wears a shirt and I love what it says. It says, make heaven crowded. And that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> we're trying to do, we're trying to get whatever young person, whatever, you don't even got to be young. You know, if you're dealing with these issues, you know, by all means, you know, let's get through them together, you know. There's no, there's no need to give up. There's no need to give in. You know, but but just give in to the Lord is what I'll encourage you. Give give in to Him. So. All right, guys. Well, y'all already know what I'm gonna say. My coffee is getting low, so I got to go. Be encouraged. Stay strong in the Lord, and we're out.